This is Sarah Chiu. Program is Basket Starfish, our language core. This is my 56th episode. Remember, if I am going too fast, type the name in the YouTube and you can find the past 55 uh, episodes. Today, I'm going to continue uh, the water consonant, which I started last week, which I didn't get to. Last week, I only get to the sources, just like the O, P, uh, R, and Q, uh, uh, letters. I told you that every single alphabet is in its place for a reason and how they lined up is also uh, like a thematically they lined up because they are connected to certain things. So uh, this L, M, N uh, are all water related and R is standing in between, you know, sometimes it can relate to the, to the head, to the source and also the S is also because of its form, it's like the curving line of a river it also related to the source which is the fountain and also it's related to the river so at the beginning when words formed you know from the stage of pictograph uh, people are, were actually very naive. So uh, being able to read the oracle bones, you know, from ancient China, I am trying to compare ancient Sumerian with all the other ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, and I hope you can see some senses in it. I have been doing it for uh, more than 20 years now, and then it is um, from an Asian perspective, you know, from a female point of view. Through all this uh, research, you know, I can actually see how gradually, you know, the matriarchal society was taken over by the patriarchal society okay let me start now you know about the importance of water it's like the color of my uh, background today it's all blue including my shirt so I'm talking about water so of course this water you know has it also to do with fertility and also to do with the water of, of the sperm and water of the female that give birth to babies. So in a way, you know, other than talking about the river, the, the, the flow, uh, you have to also understand that it has uh, the symbol of fertility in ancient time as well. Okay, so uh, I will begin today's slide. Okay, uh, as I said, you know, uh, this is, I, oops, sorry, I will show you the uh, picture of the um, basket starfish to show you, you know, what I mean, that uh, we all share one common core of the language from ancient time. So none of us are separate family trees, and uh, because uh, the patriarchs all started this, also separate, you know, us into different trees because they pay too much attention to the grammar. I am pointing to you all the core sound of words that we share since ancient time. So uh, I hope that, you know, we will start looking at human language in a different way uh, because uh, every single uh, branch, uh, one of us is just a branch of the same family. So we are not separate entities, okay? Because the patriarch way of uh, looking at it, you know, it actually in human hierarchy. So I think it needs to be changed. Okay, so uh, again, this liquid consonant and um, the uh, scholars uh when they talk about liquid consonant L and R, they were talking about uh, about these two alphabets from a very different point of view. But I am really telling you that uh, the reason why, you know, historically it was called, you know, by the ancient scholars, uh, liquid consonant, you know, in, during the uh, Roman time, it's because they, they did understand it as something to do with water. But as time went by, that sense has lost, you know, so uh, the modern scholar actually understood this liquid consonant in a different way and they found their uh, so-called scientific way of explaining it but uh, my challenge is that you know if you exclude the Chinese uh, language you know as a separate family how are you going to uh, give a conclusion without the whole picture so the main um, linguistic theories now are mainly based on the Western researchers so I hope you will find some senses I will begin to tell you how this few uh, letters are connected with water okay so uh, this L M N and R in a way S also in a way but L M N is mainly what I'm telling you today because in ancient time I can actually compare you know all the earliest pictograph with you to show you all those lines which forms these letters in the in the Latin alphabet okay so um, uh, as I said you know this L M N and R is more an S to 
uh, kind of water related and all the other I have already explained you know uh, in uh, last week and also a couple of weeks ago you know when I was talking about the, the source the ball and I already explained this few other uh, alphabets okay so I need you to have the fluidity in understanding the human concept and sound because you know human has a very very amazing ability in changing concepts between different objects okay and and even this word fluid as you can see why is there an L and uh, because you know this L has to be put there since ancient time because it is closely related to water okay and okay um, last week this is my this was my last slide I want to uh, put another exaggeration on it so what are we going to trust to trust our eyes or to trust our ears okay since Chinese um, language we do not have alphabetic system so we are not bound by the alphabets and reading so most of the time we use our eyes and use our memory heart memory to remember sound okay so you can see that um, I what I show you that you know it will be very different from the Western linguist seeing how sounds change from one to another look at this you know I give you an example ruler and sovereign the in uh, important thing is the R okay both of the, this come from also uh, related to the uh, Ra and Raja and Royal and Regal okay and and of course you know in the semantic system you will say Ras or Resh okay the head and then this is the Chinese we use Wong or Wang and even um, if you look at it you know in according to your uh, Western theory you know these two are yeah, difficult to be linked together but I will tell you that in reality in the real world Ra and Wa can be very very easily uh, interchanged in real speech okay so but I want to you to pay attention to this kind of uh, like a fountain right there like the dot you know this things flowing out this is how the ancients concept of our leader achieve is so it's like a source like the head okay that's why our is also closely related to all the words about the head okay so this is the Chinese dictionary you can look it up I gave you the link right here this is uh, the Hong Kong Chinese University's Chinese uh, Cantonese dictionary once again my research is based on the Cantonese sound which is a very very ancient uh, dialect so you will see that very interestingly the Ra and the Wa also change to this Hua and then Fa it seems impossible but the F is actually very very easily changed you know from this Hua and the, and the, and the W okay and then you will also see this Wa and then Wa and then hua okay you will see that you know according to the western linguistic uh, theory these things are not related at all but if you travel around the uh, eastern part of china you will hear these sounds consistently interchange between each other so everything is possible you know it's not as rigid as you were taught that everything changed in a linear way everything moves around in a psychic way okay so um, I have draw a, a rough map you know, map about the natural sound shifting uh, according to what I noticed so you will see that easily you know sometimes what you think are vowels can actually change back into consonant so these change are actually uh, across borders so they are not strictly vowel nor they are not strictly consonant so these changes are like that but this is very complicated but I wanted to show you what I have just show you because Chinese do not have our sound so we do have the W sound so that's why we ended up you know the head the chief as Wang instead of Ra okay so what you have just seen is just this shift between you know back and forth within the Chinese dialects and also uh, within uh, the W with the U sound which is a what uh, what the Western scholars say is the uh, vowel so uh, these changes are all possible Possible. Today what you I will be showing you will be within this tiny little limit right there, the L, M, N, because M and N between
between the nasal sound they can in, be interchanged and also um, more than that you know because the ancient pictograph actually bind them together you will see later the M and N actually looks very similar and La and Ra also are interchangeable easily as I said the Chinese do not have this R so either we jump to the W or we jump to the L so you will understand why certain things ended up uh, sounded in a different way okay so here we go I want you to um, I because I pulled uh, information from the west from the east so you can compare them in a very fair ground so I'm not just giving you a perspective from the from the east I also present you perspective from the west but uh, through my lenses okay not the uh, uh, um, uh, European you know lens okay uh, I First of all, I want to talk a little bit about why the element is element, okay? The le right there. You will see that, you know, according to the Bible, the Genesis, you know, uh, when the beginning of the creation, you will see that a very strange thing happens there. Um, before anything is made, there's actually water. One of the very first elements, the Greek set, you know. So uh, you will see water everywhere. And God said, let there be a well between waters to separate water from water. So everywhere there was already water. So this is before creation. So that means that water is beyond creation somehow, okay? So, I mean, if you use a, a logical thought, you know, to think about it. So this water in, in, in Hebrew will be ma'im, okay? So definitely with the M sound and then and then the uh, Greek will have Edo. Edo actually is written like this in small alphabet but the big one is actually look like a Y. It's just like two flows of water joined into one which is very similar to what I have shown you about the tr uh, thread. But if you go to reality all tributary also run into a big river. So this is how human concept become. Okay. So but then I want to show you when the Greek become very scientific they begin to talk about the four different elements. This is the word they talk about the matter okay Ely Ely is actually you see this is an L sound right there even though you know the L is not the L you recognize but for Greek for the Greek this is also like a tributary right there and you will begin to see a lot of this L M N keep appearing in any word about water and liquid okay as you see liquid okay so this uh, original uh, matter, you know, existed long, long time ago, just exactly like the Chinese writing right there. And this is the L, this is the Chinese writing. As I, I showed you a couple of weeks ago, when the world was in chaos, you know, this is what we said the one done, okay? This is the sound one, as I compared to the English sound one. One actually means a combination of at least two, a duo, okay? You will see all the symbol of the already there but the most important thing there is also you see the sign of water so it shows to you the east and the west both understood at the beginning of creation there was water everywhere okay before creation okay so the importance of water now you understand why the liquid and the line always carry a marker L right there because the what when you draw from the uh, the ancient time you when you draw water it's all always lines okay so I will show you this few uh, letters in, in, in Latin L R L N M okay M this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph you will see that a bigger amount of water is M that's why the Maim in uh, Hebrew when it was used to describe you know the beginning of the creation when 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 they actually had to separate water from water okay and then uh, uh, come to ancient Phoenician Phoenician actually have this wiggle line like that and then ancient Egyptian hieroglyph N is like this so uh, this is a smaller volume of water just one one line so will become the N so that's why the Greek also have narrow which is the water so this is uh, mostly to become the, the, the sea the ocean and this is also the N and the L is to do with smaller amount of water as you can see so in ancient Phoenician N become like this also a flow of the water the wiggling line and then L also like this as you can see the N and L is interchangeable even in writing but in reality 
L and N, L and N can also easily be exchanged, uh, exchangeable. Okay. So and also uh, uh, talking about sound, the L and the R also is exchangeable. So other than and that, they also get the R incorporated into this whole water system. Okay. So uh, I will now show you. And he, this is Hebrew now. This is Phoenician. This is Hebrew. Okay. This is the Hebrew L. You will see that still it is a twisting, wiggling line. You can look at it as water. You can look at it as a twisting line. Okay. So I compare it to ancient uh, Phoenician. This is an N. So you will see that in the human mind when you use your hand to draw it, the L, L, and N can be very, very closely uh, uh, interchangeable. And then I will show you another. This become Greek. This is the S. As curver and smoother this is the s you know in the n form of the s in greek okay so of course you recognize it easily because it become the latin s you know so that's why a lot of the water word in this whole world's language either it has to do with this whole group or it will do uh, with the s okay so but today we pay attention to this but when i was talking about the rope and then also the river i already told you about the turkish the chinese um, they all you know were you know concentrating in the s side okay so um now i show you words to prove to you you know all how they connected to the writing this is the, uh, how the ancient greek uh, write miro it is the flow of water you will see that the M line right, right there and then the R sound is also there it is the flow of water and then of course the me also you can link it to your English word milk you know this is liquid and then the Nima and in Greek is also you know a bigger volume of water that's why they have to put so many N and M right there it, 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 it will be like the ancient uh, Egyptians putting one of this this uh, line and then three of this line you know i mean two two sets of this line so it is the greek way of showing you is a bigger volume of water and then as i said narrow is water even in modern greek you know so they have the marker right there to show that it is the water and then now is also the greek word also for flow they have different ways of flowing you will see that the ancients are very specific so they have different way of to uh to describe the word flow so you will see that it's miro or now either the n and the m they are all related with water of course you know from the now you have the english word navigate you know so this become also to do with water and then if you look at turkish nahi is uh, nahi is water a river and then uh, in arabic you know if i transform it into latin alphabet nash is also uh, the water why is it the n and the r is also at the beginning at the end they were all markers either in sound or in in forms okay so uh, i look i come to this side to the l you see this limney it actually means a pool a whole body of water that's why you will see the l you will see the m you will see the n it's like the greek keep drawing this line you know in their head you know to show you a body of water of course you know the chinese have this this the similar sound lao and liu and you will see that there's water flowing of course we share it between you know real water and we share it between you know uh, the birth also you know the female baby coming down so you will see that we are sharing two concepts in the same word but you will see very clearly the water marker right there but pay attention to the sound is also l lao or lao or liu okay the lo in in french and lake in English this is the L word okay the Roy in Greek you will see that you know so uh, the L and R interchange you know it becomes the flow you will see that you see the Greek the the N is the flow the M is the flow the R is also the flow okay so of course it changed to Spanish the Rio and become the English river so that's why you have all these words you know appearing as a marker as an acronym in a lot of even English words so English words are not that uh, not that new as you would think okay so um, as you will see if I compare this just sound ignore your eye okay now lao liu liu rio can you see here the similarity all this we're talking about the flow of water okay liquid 
okay so of course again you know i i stress again you know uh, other other culture will stress will use the sound su you know to express either milk or the water okay so still it is liquid okay so um i go to the ancient uh greek mythology you will know that you know what the the ancient uh greek called a nymph okay uh it's the water you know uh the the some of the genus of the, the water they are all living in the water look at all their marker the nymph this is the the nymph of the sea this is the name of the nymph of the river so you will see that they also use this marker so uh i can tell you that in a way they are kind of pictorial form you know in the ancient time too so um, once again, this is the marker. They use this marker. We use this marker. This is how the East and West begin to divide because, you know, the alphabet has a link to the sound, but the Chinese use visual more. And when we use this, we use our eye. Sometimes our sound begin to vary to other sound. So that's why it gives you an impression that we do not share the same sound, but actually a lot of the core words are very, very similar. So this is how we write the river now you will see that still that line from above and then this line flowing out this is how we we say river we write river these days you know all the markers right there so okay again you will i will bring you back to ancient sumerian this meh this very important symbol very metaphysic go word that you know that uh, still we do not have a word to describe it just know that this is a quality that gives life of course you know the sperm gives life you know the the liquid of the female also give life okay so i'll bring you back to the mm, to the same sound me me okay this is min in in chinese this is what the flow is you know the female flow the male flow and the miss and then and and in ancient egyptian hieroglyph and then the the m is also really the river and I mean I mean the water body and then the me is actually the milk and then um, this is something interesting my friend uh, from Yemen actually sent me this you know and she told me that this is how the inch the, the the Arab people talk about the sexual discharge the liquid it's called Mani or Mathi this word you know if I'm not a real um, uh, Arab I wouldn't know it exactly uh, you know you have to be very very verbal in a very in that language before you know this the uh, scholars will never never really put this word into dictionaries like that and it actually remind me a very uh, uh, strange Chinese word in you know, a Cantonese word when we talk about this sexual discharge we actually say lay okay this is an L sound and of course you will never find this lay in any dic Chinese dictionary it just transcribed verbally from generation to generation in colloquial way okay in, in, in Cantonese too I don't know whether northern China still preserve it but I can only tell you that in, in, in Cantonese it's lay okay with the L sound okay so Miro in Greek is the flow and then min in ancient uh, I, I mean in Hebrew is out of from something falling down from and something very interesting is the word mana you will find it in the Bible uh, until now no one knows what exactly it is they just know that it's something falling from the sky that the Israelis survived on for 40 years in the desert but no matter what it is something falling down from the sky which still follow the tradition using the M as the sound okay so uh, I, once again you know we use this as lao or liu okay and then things flowing down and then when it comes to you know uh, something ritual we have this set of words um, and we have the this determinative we call it's either lai or li or ni okay you will see that you know it you can understood that there's uh, water coming down you can look, look at it as words coming down you can look at it as light coming down definitely it is a flow okay and you if you compare to this light to halak the uh, hebrew word for for their law their their to follow so you will see that the core word is right there but if you look it up the lock right there the second part lock actually means a path it somehow means a flowing it actually uh, it seems that the chinese word is actually drawing it out okay so that explain to you why liquid late which is milk and light law 
which is uh, lay in in in, in uh, Spanish, okay, and then the lane, the lineage, eh, all of this word in different area all started with L. It because the concept is shared so strongly since ancient time, okay. So once again, I will show you this quickly. And um, yeah, this is the Egyptian hieroglyph, the M and the N. This is to do with the sources, the R, the, the mouth, and all. this is Ra, the sun god. You can look at the sun, you can look at it as the fountain head. And then Ma, this is the pupil of the eye. Look at how they combine them to make words. This is Remy. They said it's weeping, this R, you know, plus this. This is mouth, this is eye, okay? Both meaning. And then this is me, is to do with birth and then it become a little bit abstract if this word means human being but i let you compare to a chinese word this is mo in chinese exactly this is ma in, in in egyptian hieroglyph look at this man this exactly like this uh, right there and we have the same sound man what's the meaning it means the human the man and i can bring you the german word man as well or the mensch okay this is uh the people human and then we have a similar word you can also compare this word to this word for us it means the human the man the mass the multitude so this is very interesting and i show you a passage from the bible it uh, from john 1.4 okay in him was life and that life was the light of man this is talking about jesus christ okay but um you can also have this image in your head but look at this this is exactly what it is you know so uh the ancient um egyptian pharaoh uh Akhenaten actually have read uh, drawn out right there this is like you know human being you know giving them a lot of life a lot of descendants so are these people not communicating how on earth that writing you know the Chinese and the hieroglyph can be so 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 similar okay so once again I have prepared um, a little bit too much and uh, but I think I will stop here to let you digest please type the program name again and you can watch it again you will see how closely related the writings are you can see also here the sound the lmn and i hope you can get my point okay thank you thank you for watching have a nice week and